today, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk cinematography and photography. And first off, I'm going to start off introducing a perfect startup kit if you want to start a YouTube channel and reviewing cars. Before you buy any gear, please start off by review a lot of YouTube videos and get the knowledge on how to create videos and how to edit them and really think through what you're gonna do. That will save you a lot of money. But I have set up a kit where I believe is a great startup kit for beginners or if you want to start a YouTube channel. Most important that I wish I know from the beginning when I started to create videos is actually audio. Audio is one of the most important thing. I use a Rode video mic for when the cars are passing by. So let's give me an example. You rig up the camera side of the road, you have this um, mic fitted on top of your camera, you have something that cancels the wind noise and you jump into the car, drive around and passes through and then you have the shot. So this is a perfect microphone to have on road and to you know catch that sound from the exhaust or whatever you need to know when it comes to your voice and recording uh, your content i actually think that this is one of the absolutely best solution and i wish i know that from the beginning they are a bit expensive but remember that audio is the most important thing and this is the sennheiser ew 100 g3 and what it what what i normally do is i put that in my pocket i put this underneath my shirt i have a clamp that fix the mic and then i put a filter on depending if I'm outside. Normally I'm outside, that's why I have these small, small wind cancellations on the mic. Very, very, very important, especially if you drive convertibles. This is absolutely needed. So, um, going to cameras, remember audio is absolutely number one camera. I started with a Canon 80D and I think that is still a very perfect camera to perform with. I still use this camera especially when I recording different from different angles when I for example drive cars if you saw the video when I picked up my spider together with you one link ab above here uh, then you when I was driving this camera was fitted on the hood with one of those suction cups and I recorded outside to link the pictures between I synced the audio using actually this mic inside the vehicle and I had a long cable going inside the QP and bang I have that shot right through the window I really appreciate that that kind of look even though you know sometimes I get reflection in the glass, even though I, I have a filter to limit, limit, limited the reflection. I still love when I get the reflection. Perhaps I don't see my face crystal clear, but I kind of like it. It gets alive. And everybody, at least I, when I view it, I can feel that I'm, I'm on the road. And, and if you are on the road, you know that the condition, lights and sun, it says it changes all the time. And I think it's great that I capture that in my review, even though my face gets blurry sometimes. Anyway. ADD perfect camera. It's a half frame camera. Today I'm using a full frame camera. So what that means is when I start to record with this camera, I capture this much of the picture. If I have a full frame camera, it is wider. And then of course, when I if I fitted the camera inside and recording myself, then that is much more convenient to have a full frame camera. Also, it lets lights in much easier. That improve the quality and therefore it's very important to see what kind of lenses do you have i really appreciate canon lenses and um, i started with the kit lens that i removed quite rapidly for this one and it's a efs 1755 from canon and i really think that is a really good lens and that what i normally use outside the vehicle when i get inside the vehicle and i fit the camera on the windshield with the suction cup you need a wider lens because the camera will be very close to you and a 10 millimeters to 17 millimeter is a much better option the perk with this lens the 1755 is that it has a stabilization which this one does not have and 
in the car, sometimes we create vibration. And from that perspective, this lens is a bit more stable. But I think if you have this set to 10 millimeters, I think you're good to go. Well, this camera, uh, I record the B-rolls in 60 frames per second when I have my full frame camera today. It's a Canon 1DX Mark II, by the way. I go up to 120 frames per second, which makes it easier for me when I handhold the camera when I record. Also very important, I'm, actually I would say that this is the second most important equipment when you record cars in comparison uh, audio number one, and this is number two. It is ND filter, and ND filter I have to my GoPro, so I have that to my drones, etc. And uh, this one that I have fitted on the 1755 lens is adjustable, so I really can get the camera setting as, uh, as according to, to my wishes. So ND filter is definitely number two if audio is number one. Today, so this is the starting kit, 11, 10, 17, and 1755. Uh, this is what I use today. This is actually a Sigma lens, even though I think Canon are still the number one when it comes to lenses. But this is a real monster, so to speak. It is a 2470. It goes to my full frame camera. And just to bridge over from the camera, what I did, I didn't move over to change the camera first. What I did was to get proper lenses. So I, I used this lens on this camera before I bought the full frame camera because glass matters when it comes to the quality. And if I hold this, it weighs even more than this entire set. So there we have, obviously the price are different. This camera, I think you can get the ATD for around $700. You can most likely get this uh, lens for $500 or something. This, only the lens cost about $2,000, $2,300. So it's very expensive. And also the ND filter I have here is much more expensive. But boom, loss matters, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for me at least, um, lenses more important than the camera. And then what I did was make sure that the lenses I bought was also compatible towards the full frame cameras. You have all seen my rolling shots on my vehicles. I use Ghost Pros a lot, even though I also fit this camera on the vehicles. Uh, but I think GoPro do a great job on that. So what I do is that I fit this on the camera car and then I, 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 I I adjust the camera accordingly and I've set a mark on where is this pointed. And then I jump into the car and I take that mark. And so I have it when I drive, so it's easier for me to position the car when, when I record. So I am actually not driving the Porsches from behind. So I am always driving the car that positions the car towards the frame. So if we have um, record the front of the Porsche, then I'm driving the Porsche. But if it is from behind, my neighbors is driving that, or a friend, or you one, or anybody else. And it's quite easy, actually. You call up and say, hi, I have a 991.2 GT3 RS. Could you drive it for a second so I can record? Normally, it's not a challenge to get a driver. Anyway, I fit this on the car and uh, I create those pictures, uh, 50 or 60 frames per second. I use... Um, um, I, I actually I do color that that's also another story when I started I have a standard color profile now I go to a rather more flat curve um, cinema and then I color grade it in post press um, and it's it's I'm still struggling with that two things I'm still struggling with again audio still complicated you know having putting audio let's say music to a video and then combine it to when I talk, I still struggling a lot with that to get that beautiful balance, very difficult. At least I think that is very difficult. Second of all is color grading. Sometimes I really get it spot on. I love the color grading I did on my 992 base Carrera. Didn't like it as much on the drag race with the Taycan. Still trying to get there, there with understanding how to color grade. Remember, I started to being a cinematographer. I'm not calling my cinematographer. I started to produce videos only two and a half years ago. So please be humble. I'm not a professional. Nevertheless, this could really make a difference. I really love the way GoPro handle it. Sometimes I use it connected to 
a phone to make sure that I, I could easily um, uh, turn on and off the cameras, but normally I just turn it on and leave it, and I focus on positioning the vehicles. Drone shots. Well, you have all received my ending, and when, when I stand and wave to you and the drone goes away, well, this is a perfect startup drone. It's the Mavic Air. This is my second, the first one. Crashed and burned, if you're a regular viewer, then you know. Um, I just bought this a couple of weeks ago since I actually crashed my <laughs> Mavic Zoom, and I sent it to Holland for repair, and I realized I need a spare drone, so I bought this Mavic Air and had some equipment from the last one. But nevertheless, crashed this yesterday again. I'm useless in driving drones. Or put it this way, I'm so focusing on getting that picture that I want, so sometimes I just push it a bit too far and I crash and burn. This is where I spend a lot of money into drones, uh, but that is just what it is. What's beautiful with this is the footprint. It is uh, very easy and very convenient to have with you, and the arms folds out and uh, bang, you start to record. Anyway, I really appreciate this drone. And if you would like to purchase a drone, uh, Elefun in Norway is the place to go if you are a mere car enthusiast, because he drives a vintage 911, and um, you should pay attention to his products. So, yeah. The good perk with this is that it is easy to program. It's, it, it has already prerequisites to follow you on different angles when you drive your vehicles. And this is a perfect, perfect um, startup drone. The Zoom that I currently have that is on repairs, I cannot show it. It's a much larger one. It has a larger capacity. I can zoom a bit. I can be more productive with that. Uh, with that. But also, it's more than double the price of the Zoom in comparison to a Mavic Air. So here we have it. I think this is a perfect startup kit if you would like to start to review cars. A uh, big recommendation of mine. Uh, and as a consequence, since I started, I, have, I actually enjoy more taking photos. If you haven't seen my Instagram account at, at Yanko.Lin, I started to pick up the knowledge of taking photos. So that's when, when Moe approached me and said, hi, can we take photos and start a collab? Oof, I was so pumped and I really would like to learn more about photography. And according to his picture, check his Instagram account, Megan Arias 4 um, Then you realize that, that he has something, some knowledge that would be so interesting to see. So I thought, let's bring you guys together and uh, see if we together can learn something something on how to make a uh, photography in the night taking picture of your vehicle. So let's get ahead and jump into my spider, spider and head into Stockholm. So let's uh, go to Ooh, I must admit, and this is actually also a, a difficulty in all this, is that you actually get exhausted. So I have my phone just to show you. I have my GoPro rigged. And uh, there I have my 1DX facing to, towards me. So that's the setup, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to adjust my seat, get comfortable, and off we go. <sighs> it takes a lot of energy to um, have all these uh, things fitted. It is not uh, jumping into your car and off you go. No, between I shut down the camera, loading all my gear that's actually one hour later <clears throat> well i ate something as well to be able to fit all all the energy that i need you burn a lot of calories and remember when i arrive home i have three sources to edit i have my cell phone starting up showing you guys that i have a gopro right here and i have my 1dx right here and um, i have to link all that to make sure that it makes sense the window on that side is uh, fully open uh, uh, fully closed to not getting any wind from that direction this one i don't i don't want to have reflection from that side so therefore that is lowered down and that's how it is made basically and uh, now i have also something loose oh i have to show you this equipment is I have no idea how many times I have used it. It is gaffer tape. You forgot something at home. This is the solution, everything. This is the MacGyver shit. Ooh, 
sorry, this is the MacGyver solution. That was what I was about to say. That's it. Now listen to that sound. Listen. I'm, I'm coming back when I do the review of the spider. There are a few things that is a bit annoying. Uh, I'm trying to find out exactly the technical point, what's doing. I don't think it's just switching between the adaptive cylinder control. What that is, is shifting between six and three cylinders. But nevertheless, I'm coming back to that. This is not the review. This is uh, me, you guys following me on a night shootout where we're going to try to catch how to do um, night photography of cars. That's what this is. A bang. That's what we're about to focus. Woohoo! <laughs> it's always a smile on your face driving this car. This is also a problem, you know. When I'm going to this car, that's that's quite heavy G to say at least. And that's another thing because the GoPro cope with that G forces where. where the Canon cameras, certain lenses are a bit more sensitive when the G-force starts to start to push the results. But nevertheless, ooh, running in the engine, not over 5,000. Woohoo! <laughs> well, here we have a nice corner, second gear, no cars. Well, yeah, a little twisting around. Woohoo! Love this car. <laughs> this is Mohammed, or Mo as he is called, a dentist and a proper photographer with focus on night photography. Yes, that's the subject, I think. It is. So what the, we have selected a place, or you have selected a place. Yes. Could you talk us through what, what's, what's in your mind when selecting this place? Uh, I think uh, with every car, um, I could sort of imagine uh, the correct place for it. Uh, I think this that is one of the hardest the hardest thing for picking the the right location for every car uh, because you cannot just put a car in a parking lot and shoot every car in the parking lot but the camera itself pick a basic camera focus on the quality of the glass and the lens perhaps uh, uh, and try to uh, find the sweet spot for the lens because Every lens has the sweet spots for sharpness, I think. Yeah. Uh, myself, I shoot with the Fujifilm cameras because I think they uh, produce very nice colors. Uh, this was a lovely picture. So, Mo, how do you edit your pictures? Um, I actually don't. I uh, live edit my pictures by illuminating the car with this LED lamp. And uh, with that, I can actually highlight the parts of the car that I want to highlight and leave out the dark areas that I don't want to highlight. This is why you need to pay attention to Mo's account, Megan RS4. Because he's not editing his picture in Photoshop. No, he's editing them live. This is a true art form on how to take picture of a car in the dark. As I said, a true art form, and please enjoy his beautiful pictures. Say something meaningful, say something I don't know. I wanna know you better. The way that you talk to me, the way that you make me feel, I don't know if you're real. I wanna put you in that spotlight, looking at you all night. Put you in that spotlight Oh, you make me feel fine Wanna look at you all night Put you in that spotlight This is a true art form, though. Yes. And uh, for how long have you been a photographer? Um, actually, I've held the camera in my hand for about 10 years now, but I have not started photographing cars until uh, a few months ago, to be honest. What, what, what did you photos before cars? Uh, How could you deselect the cars from the beginning? Well, um, I don't know. I think it's very hard to capture the beauty of the car in one picture until I found out that you could actually light paint the car. And uh, uh, this way you can actually um, 
expose the beautiful parts of the car. Mo, it has been a true privilege spending time with you tonight and take marvelous pictures. Thank you, you too. What is your passion? What drives you to take these beautiful pictures? Well, to be honest, I just want to highlight the beauty of the cars. Um, that's why I take these night photos. Mm -hmm.